second. So we've just been kind of like uh, one cycle of all this. Long division. So where did that 2x come from out there? Um, 2x times negative 1 times negative 2x. Oh, I meant that 2x. Where did that, that 2x on top, where did it come from? Oh, you have to have 2x to um, multiply 4x. And then how did you get the, the 8x squared by 2x? Um, 2x squared times, I mean 2x times 2x squared minus 8x squared. Uh -huh. And then 2x times negative 1 times negative 1. Good. And then the next, what's 36 times? Um, you have to have 36 um, added to negative 2x equal 34x. Okay, good. And, uh, how did you find 36? Did you ask your self that question to find 36? Or did you like subtract things that you like? So you got, you said, we need, we need 34, and so we need to add 36 to negative two to get 34? Yeah. Okay, good. I'll just add this, that if you want to find this 36, Kayla's saying, uh, reminding us that what we want to use is 34x, but at this stage we have negative 2x. So we can add 36x to negative 2x to get 34x, or we can subtract, what would be the 34x minus negative 2x will give us the 36x. Show us the next one, is that right? Yeah. Who's gonna show us? We're gonna do like a the tag team. And then oh, tag team, okay.
Okay, so why did you do that? Um, well, you, first things first, you take uh, the, these stuff up here, uh, take the 3, put it in the slot, and 34, and 72, then the negative 64. Right? Um, and you put the negative 4 there, and the 0. Um, then you take down this one to this point, and then the 34, you take that, multiply it by that, uh -huh. and we'll put it there, and you add these two, okay. take that, and then multiply, add, uh -huh. multiply, add, and this would equal zero, so it's a remainder. So with that, you would end up with... Oh, wait, 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 but why though? Why did you do that synthetic? Oh, it's a lot easier than one division. <laughs> why would you do <laughs> any division? Well, okay, so that's why you use synthetic, but why would you do any division at all? Um, well, so you could factor it out, kind of, and so you could get like an actual factoring pattern instead of having to do it off from scratch, uh -huh. which would make it easier to in the end kind of do it. So. Okay, so then... How do you know that like negative four is right here? Because there, how do you know? Because if or what if it equal? Because with this, you put the inverse of whatever is x is being added or subtracted from. Uh -huh. In this case, if it's negative four, that this is a zero, so x would be it be a. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It would, it would be x plus four. The factor would be the, yes, the factor. Uh huh. X plus four would be a factor, so you take the inverse of that, which also happens to be a zero, okay. and they give you zero. Okay, good. So you're dividing out that factor of X plus four to find out the other factor. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, from that you would get three X squared plus 22X minus 16, and we are trying to get zero, so that
that would be? And that would be three times two thirds is positive two minus two is zero. Okay. And also one, where this is coming from, you said it equals zero and solve for x, x equals negative eight. Three x minus two equals zero. Add two, divide by three, we get two thirds. X plus four equals zero. If you subtract four on both sides, x equals negative four. Okay. okay. So this negative four is a zero, x plus four is a factor. Uh, if we factor out that x plus four, then we wind up with this quadratic, which we can factor using those same old quadratic uh, strategies for factoring. Uh, we use the old AC method here. I'm just going to move this up here. So we found two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and add to 22. That's negative 2 and 24. We wrote it back out like this. And we grouped this together and found that there's a factor of x that was in common, factor of 8 in common here, uh, factor of a common factor of 3x minus 2. Uh, then Gavin came in and wrote the whole thing out as a product of three factors, set it equal to 0, and then figured out what would make this 0, what would make this 0, what would make this 0. Now, more individually, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. I want you to do it individually. You can do it on my board if you want. You can do it in your notes so you can save it. Uh, or we're going to do it up here anyway, so you can just download the notes. It's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to give you another one. But I want you to do it on an individual basis. Before we go over this, let's first remember something. What is a zero? This is a, this is a polynomial and it has zeros. What does that mean? Negative two is a zero. What does it mean that negative two is a zero? Yeah? You put in negative two for x, you get that y is zero. So if negative two is a zero, another way to say it with function notation is f of negative two, meaning putting negative two in first x gives you zero. Right, that's what that means. Okay. If negative two is a zero, Gavin talked about this a little bit ago, x plus two must be a factor, right? Uh, that's the only possibility. If x minus two is a zero, or if, x, if negative two is a zero, then x plus two must be a factor. Well, if we know that, if we know that x plus 2 is a factor, then let's uh, break this down a little bit by factoring out an x plus 2 using synthetic division. And we found 5x squared minus 11x plus 4. x plus 2 times 5x squared minus 11x plus 4, what will that be? If I multiply these two factors together, what will they be? The original thing. So we took this 
And using synthetic division, we factored out the factor of x plus 2. And we found the other factor, 5x squared minus 11 plus 4. Okay. So here's the, the, the useful thing about that. If we're looking for zeros, well, clearly we know that, uh, that negative 2 would have to be a zero. That's something we knew from the beginning. Okay. Uh, if we multiply two things together and the result is zero, then one of them has to be zero. Right? So that a million times, that's the zero product property. Multiply things together, you get zero, one of them has to be zero. So either x plus two is zero, and x is negative two, we already knew that. Or five x squared minus 11x plus four is zero, and then we have to solve this quadratic. Okay. Then we try and factor it. And what did I see a lot of? This is good, good, good stuff. 20 there, negative 11 there. What are we fi figuring out? Can't do it. There are no numbers that multiply to 20 and add to negative 11. There aren't that many factors of 20. It doesn't take that long to figure that out. Okay? So, if we're trying to solve this equation, a quadratic equation, we find that it's not factorable. That means uh, this magic number factory doesn't work. Guessing and checking factory is not going to work. How are we going to solve this quadratic if we can't factor it? Quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. That is the, the end all be all of quadratic equation solving, is the quadratic, factor, quadratic formula. Okay. Remember, briefly mentioned quadratic formula. It's just completing the square. You could also use completing the square on this. That's what quadratic, factor is, or quadratic formula is. So x equals negative b. b is negative 11 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a, a is up. 11 plus or minus the square root of 121 minus 80, yeah, 80. over 10, 11 plus or minus the square root of <coughs> Simplify the square root of 41, we would, but it's, it's prime. So we can't. So there are the other two zeros 11 plus the square root of 41 over 10, 11 minus the square root of 41 over 10. Kind of a challenge, but simple. Yeah, see that? The process isn't a difficult process to execute. The difficult part is understanding what they're asking you for, understanding how to get it. That's why I'm constantly asking you, why did Kimmy set one of these things equal to zero? Because right? we multiply two things together to get zero, and then one of them has to be zero. And I ask you, what is a zero? And I ask I, all these things, uh, these definitions, and these concepts, and all this kind of stuff, uh, because it, when it comes down to this, it's better for you if you don't try and memorize it, but you think, okay, I want, I want zeros. What can I do? Well, I, gotta, I know that this is a zero, so I know that's a factor. So I, know I can factor it out, and I can find this other factor. That factor is much easier than this original guy. It's just a quadratic. And then I'll try and factor it. If it doesn't work, I'll use a quadratic formula. Are there any questions about that? Pretty clear. All right. Uh, so if we've got a zero. There it is. There's our zero. It's associated with a factor. We use synthetic division to factor out that factor, and you get a simpler quadratic or a simpler polynomial of some kind. And we keep factoring it down until we can set these two linear factors equal to zero, and uh, solve for x. If I gave you another polynomial with a zero, do you think you can handle it? If you don't, we're going to get some more practice, but we're going to also add one more level of uh, step, uh, one step further back from the answer, I guess. One more hiccup or challenge or whatever. So I'm going to take you to 5.6.
will give you this polynomial, this third degree polynomial. And I tell you that I want the zeros of this polynomial. What do you need? Someone who can go shopping with the less fortunate children on Saturday at nine o'clock, twelve thirty. Okay, so right, so we want to find the zeros of this polynomial. Is this similar to the problem we just did? Similar, not exactly the same. There's different numbers and stuff. Obviously, what else is different? There's some given number. Right. In the previous problem, I said n negative two is a zero. Now I'm not saying anything. I'm not telling you any zeros. No zeros. So, well, we kind of need a place to start. Is that agreed? Mm -hmm. I need to tell you one is a zero, negative two is a zero, five is a zero, something like that. Right? But I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. So how can you get started? How can you figure out what the first zero is? Okay, you could factor it. Could you factor it? It's not, uh, that I, would, I would try to factor by grouping and then it wouldn't work and I would say, this probably isn't worth my time to, to try and factor this out. Because I, I happen to know that there's a way you don't have to factor it like that. I mean essentially, yeah, we're gonna be factoring it, but we're gonna make better guesses than just, I mean, let's talk about that. Like, what, what kind of guesses could we make? We could just kind of guess x plus two is a factor, maybe? Could you divide it? So instead of doing it that way, which is kind of but it's division, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We could just come over here and say, like put a what would we put here? Two. 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 Oh, you put a negative. Negative two. If I if I wanted to guess that x plus two is a factor, okay, now we're getting somewhere. If I wanted to guess that x plus two is a factor, I could put negative two there and use synthetic division. At least that's faster, right? Actually, it's not too bad. It's not it doesn't take too long. We'll put uh, one and negative four. One and a negative ten, and we'll try it. Maybe we'll be lucky. One, six, uh, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. And I can tell that's not going to work, right? Why is that not going to work? We're going to have a remainder that's not zero, so that's not going to be it. Right. So where where did we get negative two from, or where, or where did we get x plus two from? Pull it out of the air. So we'll guess. So if we were to make a, a list of guesses, we would cross out negative two because it didn't work, right? Negative two is not a zero, the x plus two is not a factor, so on and so on. What's our next guess? Just throw a guess out there. I was gonna say like common multiple, but that is always ruled out to see it too, so it kind of matters. Common multiples? Of what? Of like four and uh, like four numbers. Oh, okay. So that's a good a good idea. Maybe some clues can be drawn out of these numbers up here, right? So it seems like these numbers have something to do with it, don't they? It, that's correct. They they do have something to do with it. So let me tell you uh, how we can make an educated uh, a list of educated guesses. So negative two didn't work get rid of those. And what we're going to need to do, this is what we're going to need to do, is make another guess. Make another guess and another guess until we get one. Okay, but we're going to make a shorter list than an infinity long list, right? Because right now we have no idea what those numbers would have to be. So to do this, we're get, we have this thing called the rational zero test, which allows us to make a list of all possible rational zeros. Remember, a zero is a number you can plug in for x to make y zero. Okay. A rational number is one that's like a fraction. Okay. So we're going to make a list of all possible fractions that can be plugged in for x to get zero for y. Okay. And it'll be an exhaustive list. It'll be the list of all possible rational zeros. Okay. If it's not on our list that we make, it's not possible. Right? So here it is. First, we're going to list the, uh, the factors. The factors of the 
constant. What's the constant? Negative 10. What are the factors of negative 10? 5 and 2. 5 and 2? 2. 2 and 5. 1 and 10. I'll just write them in order. But it has to be negative. <coughs> so like if, if 2 is positive, it's negative 5. But if 5 is, negative, or 5 is positive, 2 has to be negative. Okay, so all of them have to be allowed to be positive or negative. Factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, so those are some valid zeros. Those are possible. Okay. Uh, also, and this this won't add a lot of variation in this problem, but we'll see variation in another problem. We're going to also list the factors of the leading coefficient. What's the leading coefficient? One. one. What are the factors of one? One. One, one and one. Yeah, I'm just uh, what did you say one? It sounds weird and everyone just says one. Let's try it. One. one. Mm -hmm. Like not at the same time. It's one. 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 Is that out? Is that out? Bunch of jerks. Okay. So like I said, these are gonna be these are gonna be rational zeros that are gonna be fractions. Okay? So all the possible rational zeros will be you know, we'll pair up numbers. We'll pair one of these numbers with one of these numbers. Okay. But in the case of plus or minus one, it's not going to change anything. You, you pair up one with one, you get one. Negative one with one, you get negative one. Negative one with negative one, you get positive one, right? This, like dividing all these numbers by positive and negative one just gives us the same list. Okay. It would be different if the leading coefficient was something else, but I want to start it up so it's not really easy that way. So if we had a two. If we had a 1, a 2, and a 3, and then a 6, because that would make 6, uh, then we'd start to get a longer list. Right? But we'll start here with plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 5, plus minus 10. Divide them all by plus minus 1. Doesn't matter, we get all the same numbers. Okay? But there we go, it's a list. It's a shorter list than an infinity long list. How long is this list? Four, eight numbers. Positive and negative. <coughs> Okay, so we start off with this list, we make a guess. Let's make a guess. What guess do you want to make? What's that? Negative one. Negative one. Right. And checking them with synthetic substitution or synthetic division is pretty quick. Yeah. And it's good to use synthetic substitution rather than plugging it in directly, because when you're done, if it worked, you'll also have the, the other factor. Okay. So negative one, bring down the one, negative five, Five, six, and no, that does not make ten right here to give us a zero remainder. So negative one is a no go. But that's okay, we can cross it off the list. What's it? What? Yeah? Well, the negative one could work when it's a positive one could work. Well, if that were true, do you think we would have bothered to list them both? So the thing is, like when, when you put a positive one there, then it's going to make the opposite of that number, and then we're going to add it together differently to give you a different number. So, no, it's possible for that one to work. Just positive one? Okay. One, one, one times one, one, negative three. See, it's already different. Uh, one times negative three is negative three, negative two, and then one times negative two is negative two. That didn't work out. This is positive five. This is positive five. Let's see. First, let's cross out the positive one. That was one of those. Let's try five. One, five, one, five. Uh, six and thirty. No. So five is out. Might as well try negative five while we're here. Okay, 10. 
So we did it all. We, we made all of our guesses. Are there any other guesses we can make? From that list, no. From this list, no. This is, a, this is like I said, an exhaustive list. It's a list of all the possible, what? Zeros. Certain kinds of zeros. Rational. rational zeros. So this is a list of all the possible rational zeros. So what can we conclude about this polynomial? Rational zeros. A rational number can be plugged in for x and get zero. Okay. And Keenan's right. I wrote down. I didn't write it down wrong. I wrote down the wrong problem. Okay. The point of this exercise was to write down just the list of possible zeros, which we did. I got you, Stu Dog. Thank you. Because I got extra addition. I didn't see right through. I appreciate you using that just for a little old math class. Okay. So let's do it again, but for one that will actually work out, we can find the rest of zero. Let's first up make our uh, our list of factors of the constant. What are the factors of that constant? What's that? 7 and 8, okay, 7, 8, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 8, 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 2 and 28, 4 and 14, 4 and 14, everything? Yeah. Okay. Now is that, is that our, is that our list every time you just list the factors of the constant? No. no. What else do we have to list? Uh, so we got a factors of the leading coefficient, which are, and we will do one that's not just as easy as just one. See a variation of problems, but um, why don't you go ahead and take it from here? Make your guesses. Okay, one of the guesses is going to be right, and you know what will happen is you'll have a problem just like this. Like after your guess, you'll you'll basically be in this kind of situation. You'll know one of the zeros. You can factor out this other uh, factor, and then solve that. What will be a quadratic? Take it from there, plug in your guesses with synthetic substitutions, and division, and uh, finish it up. So again, we set up the synthetic substitution uh, with 1, negative 5, and we make our guesses. Anybody guess something that worked? Yeah? Uh, 7. 7. Two also worked? Okay. Well, that'll help us in just a second. Uh, so x, um, what factor does this give us? Does so 7 tell us what factor, what's, what's the factor giving us 7 and 0? x minus 7. x minus 7. And then we get x squared plus 2x. 
So again, we're trying to find values of x and give us a y of 0, an output of 0. So if we factor this out, we'll be one step closer. What did you say you found? Uh, two. Two works, which means that what must be a factor? X minus, X minus 2. So that must be another factor. That must be one of the factors of this quadratic then. Which means that the other one would have to only get a, get a negative 8 here. Plus 4. If that works. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 plus 4 is, is uh, positive 2. We set each of these equal to 0. Because if you multiply a bunch of stuff together and get 0, then one of them has to be equal to 0. That gives us 7. This one gives us a negative four. What <coughs> about the zeros? You could just guess all day long. Okay. Um, but it's definitely I recommend finding one, getting the, this quadratic, and then factoring it. Let's do one that's got a leading coefficient. list of the zeros. And you can see how they're kind to us because mine doesn't have that many factors. Uh, they're not kind of zeros. Factors of the constant. What are the factors of the constant? One and nine. Three and three. Three and nine. One, three and nine. Factors of the leading coefficient. One and two. Now, let me remind you in case don't remember because we haven't actually really done this yet. Uh, now this is just a li list of the factors of the, the, the constant, and this is just a list of the factors of the leading coefficient. How do we make a list of our possible zeros? Close. You divide them. So you take these numbers divided by these numbers. Okay. So this one divided by that one, this one divided by this one, this one divided by that one, this one divided by that one, this one divided by that one. And that is just going to give us the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Okay. And next we go to the same numbers and we put them over 2, and then we put them over whatever, and whatever, and whatever, and all the factors that have the leading coefficient are. So plus or minus 1 over 2, plus or minus 3 over 2, plus or minus 9. There's our list of guesses. What goes here? Zero. Zero, yeah, very good. Because we have no x term, and so we missed zero the whole list. So what do we do now? This is a complete list of all the possible rational zeros. So we're going to try uh, one of these. Take a guess. Okay. So I'll leave you to it. You make a guess. Get some more practice. Guess until you get it right. You're factoring it out. Again, please don't draw with pens because. 